Republicans' last ditch effort to pass some kind of Obamacare repeal collapsed in the middle of the night drama involving John McCain, who returned to the Senate while battling a brain tumor. After campaigning for seven years on a promise to repeal and replace Obamacare, in this critical moment, they couldn't get it done. And it was Senator John McCain, the self proclaimed maverick, who delivered the final blow. This was a massive blow to Republicans, the president, and their defining pledge to the American people. In the very early morning hours here, their latest push to overhaul Obamacare came crashing down. Joining us now is a reporter who's covered the story, Susan Ferricio, chief congressional correspondent for the Washington Examiner. So the media fall in and out of love with John McCain over the years, but now when he cast this decisive vote, New York Times, a stunning moment, a flash of the maverick John McCain who was unafraid of going his own way. Is that because many in the press are relieved that he essentially saved Obamacare for now? Uh, yes, <laughs> and I think it's really interesting. You know, he's endeared himself to reporters over the years from the time he ran for president in 2000 to mm -hmm. now in the hallways. He's a talkative lawmaker. We flock to him like moths to the flame because he's willing to tell us what's going on. And, and he's endeared himself to reporters, there's no question about it. It was more like what he did than what he said, though. If he had gotten on the floor and moved this product forward to conference and kept health care alive, you know, you wouldn't have seen the, 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 the this narrative that he's a maverick and some kind of a hero. You know, that's not what the media is supposed to be doing anyway. We're supposed to be just covering the story. Oh, we're supposed to be just covering the story. But he did get some flack from some of the media when he cast the initial vote, which is a procedural vote just to let the debate go forward, hoping that they could reach some kind of compromise. And when he returned to the Senate, uh, John McCain also took a shot at this business. Take a look. Stop listening to the bombastic loudmouths on the radio and television and the Internet. To hell with them. Speaking on behalf of Loudmouse, um, was he talking about uh, bombastic commentators on the right as well as the left? No. He was talking about, well, I, you know, I could name them, but you know, the, the people who are conservative uh, you know, heroes on, on conservative radio, Mark Levin, Rush Limbaugh, who often come out against some of the leadership in the, in the Republican Party for being too moderate. They yeah, want to push it further. Yeah, right. So yeah. exactly. So he, that's what he's because talking Because they about. often criticize him as being a rhino or not uh, being in line with Absolutely. the party. They're very sensitive to that on Capitol Hill, uh, to, to Mark Levin and Rush. And, and there's sort of back and forth there. And I think they, they, would, they wish that he would be quiet. You know. So some Republicans like McCain think uh, some of these uh, folks who have you know, big followings and are very influential on the right have too much power to make them look bad? Oh, absolutely, and they do have power. You know, this, these are the, the, the talk radio on the right has spurred so many important things in politics. Dave Bratt, in the Virginia congressman who defeated Eric Cantor, the, the then majority leader, you know, he came really out of conservative talk radio. They really bolstered his candidacy. Right. They have the power to do that. So there's reason for these Republican leaders to be fearful of them. Last question. The media try to provide both sides. They're supposed to provide both sides. Is there any way to spin this other than a total failure by Republicans, President Trump by extension, on a signature issue they, that the GOP on the Hill been talking about for seven years? Well... First of all, it's not over. They're still talking about moving this thing along. Okay. And I don't think you can look at it as a total failure when what they're trying to do is undo an entitlement, which has been nearly impossible for either party to try to reform over the years. I don't think they may have just aimed too high. Uh, no, I just think the process, the politics, the entitlement, the way it became entrenched over the years made this really difficult to do. They try to do two things at once. It's not over, though. I do think that they're going to try to do something watch the next couple of weeks when the Congressional Budget Office scores this okay. thing, you may see something happen. Well, sometimes these bills come back to life. It happened with the Obamacare certainly bill. And did. It certainly happened with the House bill, which mm -hmm. failed and then passed. Susan Ferricio, great to see you. Thanks. Thanks very much for stopping by.